Hey everyone, not only are we no longer in our hotel, we're no longer in our temporary apartment. We're in a permanent setup now. So, let's have a look at that. Does it look like we've just moved into a place? Yeah, we've just moved into a place. In fact, we're not even fully moved in yet. We're still in the process of moving in now. But what this does mean is that we have found an apartment to live in here in the mall. But of course, that leads to the question, how did we get to this point? How did we get to the point that we have chosen a place to live here in a new city, in Ningbo? And how might you, if you were looking for a place to live in Ningbo or in some other city in China? Not so different from other parts of the world, you're probably going to need a real estate agent to help you out. Like this. This place is a real estate agency. You'll often find them near housing communities, like here. You may be able to see some pictures of real estate on offer. Now, from what I can see, these are all for sale, not for rent. But often you can find places where they will have things for rent too. Even this one might, they just might not show it here. You may also be able to uh, get a friend or someone from your employer if you're living here for work to help you, uh, to help introduce an agent to you. Even after getting a real estate agent, you may still need help from a Chinese friend or someone from your employer. And the reason for this is that real estate agents do not necessarily speak English or any language other than Chinese. If you do not speak Chinese, you may need some help understanding what they're saying. There are some who speak English, and it is possible that your employer or some friends can recommend one such agent. I have noticed, though, that there may be a bit of an unwritten surcharge if your real estate agent speaks English, either because he, the agent considers it to be um, necessary to uh, recoup the fact that they've got that skill, or simply because they may have a perception that foreigners, or at least Westerners, are picky and expect expensive, luxurious digs. This has been an experience we've had before, but it doesn't hurt you to try if you can find an agent who speaks English. But if not, get some help, and you may be able to still work with one who doesn't speak English. Okay, so once you've got an agent, obviously you're going to have to tell them what you're looking for. And there's a bunch of factors that you may wish to consider in deciding where to live. Of course, the obvious one is the size of the apartment you're living in and how many rooms it has. For example, the one we've chosen is a three-bedroom apartment. This one here, which doesn't actually have a bed just yet, but it will. This one, which does have a bed a currently occupied master bedroom and one bath. One bath is certainly not the best for our large family, but it's not super uncommon in China. But if you're on a house hunt in China, you ought to figure out what size is acceptable to you, what number of bedrooms is. Now aside from basic questions of the size and how many rooms are in an apartment, you may also be interested in how new it is, and therefore perhaps how nice it is. This community here, which is not far from the one we ultimately chose, is generally understood as a pretty new, pretty luxurious community. With a very Mediterranean looking name, Viva Costa, to go with it. It's nice. We looked at several apartments here, and we liked them quite a lot. But we love the price tag somewhat less. Where we are was a bit cheaper. Here's another view of that community we were just at a bit ago. And over here, past the gas station, over there is the community we ultimately chose. It's a bit cheaper because it's not quite as new and luxurious. Now, I think it's totally fine. I think it's extremely comfortable. But what matters to you might be different from what matters to me. 
if you want the very heights of comfort, then maybe this isn't the right place for you. Maybe this community over here is the one we can now barely see through the gas station. But I promise it's there. Now, or maybe you want to find another community that's even more luxurious. Now, one thing both of these communities have in common that's a very nice amenity. They are both near this shopping center, Wanda Plaza. This place has pretty much anything you could want in terms of shopping. It's got restaurants, you got the big three US chains that, are, that exist in China. That is to say, McDonald's, KFC, and Pizza Hut. And you've got tons of Chinese food here too. And there's also a supermarket in the basement. So whatever you need, you're probably gonna find it here. Being near shopping can be an advantage. So you might want to consider that when choosing a place to live. If you drive a car, proximity to shopping may not be so important since of course you can drive to shopping. But a lot of foreigners here in China are like me. We don't drive, we don't own cars. And if that's the case, then proximity to shopping may be really helpful to you. And if you don't have a car, another major factor may be proximity to public transportation. Just over there, we have an entrance to a metro station, just across the expressway from here. That was a factor in our just choosing this particular apartment. Now, be careful, just because you can see it doesn't mean you can reach it easily. If you look down here, you'll see, oh, there's water between me and the metro. Fortunately, while I can't quite get there as the crow flies from my house, this footbridge does make for a fairly quick journey on foot to the metro station. Let's have a look at that. And out the door. To the gate that leads to the footbridge. Now to use this gate you do need to have either a card to get you through here which is given to residents or you need to be identified as a resident using facial recognition. I'm not currently on this thing for facial recognition, but I do have a card. So I can use the card to get out the gate. And when I come back, I can use this one to get back in. But for now, we get to the footbridge here. Crossing this Kind of looks more like a canal than a river, doesn't it? It's even got a fountain in the middle of it. But whatever it is, cross it. And head left to go toward the metro on this, on this little footpath, leading alongside the river for a bit, or the canal as the case may be. And from here, cross the road, go under the expressway. And on the other side of the expressway, we can get to Zhuangqiao Railway Station. I timed it earlier and door to door, that is the exit door from my apartment building to this station entrance, is only less than five minutes. So that's pretty close. It's actually closer than I've ever been to a metro station. Now having said that, this kind of close access will result in higher rents. So you have to decide if it's worth your money to get this. One thing I'm also noticing, if you've got any mobility issues, the steps here and the turnstile gate over there might make this particular exit and path to the metro not very useful to you. So that's something some people may need to look out for. Also, certainly for any tall building, like this one, which is 20 stories. 
there's one other amenity you might need to concern yourself with that you might not ever have even thought of. An elevator or lift. You might be thinking to yourself, surely it would always have one of those? If it's a new enough building, then definitely. But there are old buildings where you actually don't get any choice but to use the stairs, even if you're up quite a ways. I have lived on a fourth floor before where I had to walk upstairs the whole way. And that's not the worst place I've ever seen. I tutored for a family once upon a time, living on the ninth floor of a building with no lift. They actually asked, should we move the tutoring to his grandma's house so that you don't have to walk up nine flights of stairs? Eight, I guess, technically. And I said, no, I'll handle it. And I did. I handled it. But that was once a week. Don't think I would want to live in a place where I had to do that on a routine basis. Doesn't sound like any fun to me. Yeah, I am not used to walking up seven floors like this. Good thing normally I can rely on the lift. If you don't want to walk up many stairs, you may want to specify. Please get me a place with a lift. And of course, another factor in how much you'll like the place, as well as in the price point you're going to deal with, is the view. I would say this is by no means a bad view. Having said that, we definitely saw some more expensive apartments, and they were more expensive in part because they had very nice views of the river. That is going to boost your cost some. When you're actually looking at apartments in China, of course you may wish to ask what furnishings come with them. It's pretty common for foreigners in China to rent furnished apartments, but of course they may not have all the furniture and uh, appliances that you're looking for. For example, the one we've rented has some wardrobes, along with a couple of beds. A dining room table with some chairs, a couch, a TV, and a washing machine. In this case, it's in the bathroom, but you may also find it on the balcony. Speaking of which, do not expect to get a dryer. These are not commonly used in China. Rather, we hang things out on the balcony to dry. Your balcony will typically have a bar or two like this to hang things on. In this case, there's even some bars outside the balcony you can use to hang your clothes up. Kitchen will typically come with a fridge. This stuff here is ours, but also a stove. Stoves here are typically two burners. You also got this machine here to blow away the air. If you found a place you think you want, you can discuss the rental price with the landlord. Um, as pretty much anywhere else in the world, this is something you might be able to negotiate. Though you might want to have a Chinese person with you who understands a uh, haggling culture in this country a bit better. And if you ultimately do choose a place, then they'll ask you to sign a lease. Here's a fairly typical rental agreement template which you can fill out with all the relevant information such as the amount of the rent, of the deposit, and the length of the lease. The normal amounts for things like deposits and uh, agent fees do vary from region to region so again it can be useful to have a local with you to help you know that you're not getting scammed. Several days later. And here we are. We've now moved into this place. All the boxes are gone. Well, except this one. But otherwise, it's pretty good now. Even got some food on the table. Got some watermelon, carrots, some bread. Yep, we've made this place home. So we're here in our new home, and I hope you enjoyed coming along with me as I discussed some of the things we did to get to this point. I would have loved it if I could have um, filmed the entire process of house hunting for us.
but it just wasn't going to be practical with uh, the fact that we were taking the kids with us the whole time and just trying to herd them all around while filming wasn't going to happen. Anyway, hope you enjoyed what you did get to see of this, and if you did, this would be a great time to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching. See you all next time. Bye.